What I'm doing here is a little different to usual. This isn't part of my usual playthrough, but I noticed a video was posted by Gaijin Hunter just uh, today about getting access to the um, Trickster class early. And I thought, well, what's so special about that? Who even wants to play Trickster? But Magic Archer, Magic Archer would be worth having. And I happen to know how to get Magic Archer unlocked early. However, this isn't as easy as simply slipping through a gate in a cart. This is going to require a lot of running. Now, before I actually get to the instructions, I strongly recommend loading up with um, curatives, panaceas or whatever, get a camping kit. Besides the usual stuff, oh yeah, and lantern oil, you'll need about two or three pork crystals if you want to do this efficiently some fairy stones, and you will almost certainly need some wake stones, because this is going to be tough. Step one of the process is to get to the other side of this bridge. Assuming you've got to the capital already, it's a simpler matter as just travelling west over to here. Right? I mean, you can do this even before you unlock warrior or sorcerer, but, you know, the further through the game you are, the tougher you're going to be and the easier time you're going to have of it. Because this is either going to require fighting or running or some mixture of the two. So, you need to get to the other side of that bridge. Now, you could take the ox cart to the checkpoint rest town and then backtrack. Or you could just do what I'm doing and go up here and cross the next bridge which is over there and now I'm coming up on the other side of the bridge and my pawns are jibber jabbering as usual now I think this is as good a time as any to mention I am playing this game modded if anyone else is unaware and I'm trying to avoid combat but yes I'm playing this game modded but it doesn't need to be modded it can be done without mods anyway now we're on the other side of the bridge, where you get to step two of the process. Over here is a spot where you'll normally find a drake. Now, it's quite easy to make a drake despawn. All you have to do is get in a fight with them and then run away. And if you come back later, they'll be gone. So, you want to get past the drake here and move into these woods, right? Woods full of deer and all this good stuff. There's going to be some um, little green gobbo crappards popping out of the ground, but you can just run past them all. Yeah, there's quite a lot of them. And you need to go all the way to the back and go into this cave. This is Guerco Cavern and it is a shortcut. And you'll come out in this room. Yes, and turn left, jump across this gap, oh, and get wailed on by a bloody hobgoblin by the looks of it. Jump across the gap again. You know, bugger this, formless faint. That should bring you out here, and then you turn left, and there's another passage here with more hobgoblins. And you keep running, or fighting, past all of the hordes of hobgoblins. I told you this was bound to be difficult. And you're up on this cliff path, right? Now, we're not done with the cave yet. There's one more troublesome target to get past, and that's the golem. But again... You can just run past him. You don't actually have to fight him or anything. And as long as you're quick, you can get past. And you'll get to this fork in the road, right? Now, you probably want to go to the right. You'll have an easier time of it. Because if you go out on the left, you have to make your way along a cliffside. Where some rather nasty harpies and stuff are going to be attacking you. And you slip down here and you go into this cliffside cave and stick to the left do not pick a fight with the chimera 
and you're into Batal. Not Batal proper, just uh, cliffside stuff. Now these ones, these enemies you will probably have to actually fight. Because you need to clear this area in order to be able to use the campsite. Anyway, where was I? Yes, around this area with the huts. No, I've got a forager pawn, but it'll be about here on the map, okay? There's a campfire, and you want to make sure it's daytime. This is super important. We've made sure it's daytime. This might be the tricky bit. I'm telling my pawns to wait, okay? Wait there, pawns. Okay. Now, you want to go up this side path and down here onto this little grassy area. Now, down in this pit below is the Dragon Forged Cave. And if you need a port crystal and you haven't bought his yet, you can buy one from him. Now, I recommend setting up a port crystal right here. Because we might be in for a bit of a wait. What you've got to do here is you've got to get a griffin to spawn. Here we go. Mr. Griffin is coming into land. I call him George. So, if George would kindly just land on the ground. Step three is completed. We're on George and we just have to make sure we don't fall off until he leaves. Oh, gods, the harpies are all aiming for me. George, what are you doing? These bloody asshole harpies are attacking George. Oh shit, they're all still alive. Poor George. Okay. Here we go. It was a bit difficult to get the griffin moving. But once it starts flying, it should fly roughly southward. makes for a wonderful ride seriously this was like my third attempt it might do this it might double back so um yeah just be warned here we go it's heading south again now Now you see that bridge in the distance? That's our target. And make sure that you have wake stones with you at this point. Because George might not fly low enough for you to survive a fall without them. That said, he does fly pretty low over the bridge. So here we go. Step four is going to be to jump off now. And land on Moon's Wax Bridge. Bye, George. Have fun. Anyway, at this point, you can summon your pawns back if you want. They should teleport to you. Right. Next step of the run. We got a charge to the um the mining camp on the volcanic island, so let's just get across Moon's Wax Bridge. Here we go, volcanic island camp. As you can see, this is the first time I've been here, at least with this character. Now, you'll probably want to set up another port crystal somewhere around here, if you can. And this one is even more important than the Griffin one. Because we'll need this for a quest later. Step five is to leave this place by the western gate and head west along the path. Generally trying to stick close to the coast, if possible.
Now, we're nearly there. If we can just shake off these hobgoblins. Now, we want to gather these herbs. These are important. There should be a campfire here. And you can see a house over there. This is where we get to step six. Now, at the same time as unlocking Magic Archer, we'll be unlocking Dwarven Smithing. And this you want? is the Dwarven Smith. I'm in no mood to have my ear talked off, thank you. And he's got a quest for you. Fire. I can scarce talk for the pain. So, Leave an old man be. So yeah, do step six. Mind. Give him his herbs. Say no to some wild flowers. He says wild flowers, he just means herbs. Give him any old what herbs. Is it now? Unless you brought me some wildflowers, I'd prefer to be left alone. Yeah, give him uh, just whatever. That'll do. Well, that was most kind of you. My thanks for the trouble. Right. Here goes naught. Ah. Oh, that did the trick. Relief at last. I was beginning to fear that I'd be stuck here for the rest of my days. I've a mind to thank you, sir. Would you look in on me at my home? Yep, that's what we I want. Live nearby. There aren't too many houses out here, so you'll find it soon enough, I expect. Yeah, well, we've already seen it. Okay. So, yeah. That's his house, and we should probably camp to give him time to actually get home, so... Right, now it's morning. We should be able to catch up with him. I assume that was step six. Anyway, you go down here to the left. You don't go chasing off after treasure chests. You ignore your pawns who are jibber-jabbering on. You go all the way down here and go across these rocks. Around the corner. And up the hill. There we go, and you approach the house, and a lady will walk out. Now, she's the one who will teach you the Mystic Archer Thank vocation. You, sir, she's an elf, as you can see. Forgive me, dear. I forgot to tell you. I... Oh, not this again. They'll have, they'll have a little argument. It's, it's not really important. This one's diff oh? You will have to forgive. Now, let me fetch your... Now, he says he's going to fetch a reward, and he's going to go into the house. Now, you just have to follow him inside. I'm considering all of this as part of step six, honestly. But he hurts his back again. In your state, you'll never reach it. And that's to say nothing of the monsters that haunt Anyway, yes, he wants to go to the hot spring. And they jibber jabber an awful lot. Anyway, you've got to go over here. Open the chest to stop my goddamn daggers from beeping. And have a chat with him. Offer to escort him. This is step seven. Take him to the hot springs. Okay. Right, let's go outside. Now... We should be able to shortcut this because we put down a port crystal earlier. If we can just get him outside. Now, just pick him up. And then go in here. Get one of your fairy stones. And use it to go to the volcanic island camp. Yes, you can totally teleport carrying people. Now, it's not very far now. We just have to put him down here, gently. Climb up this ladder. Now, as I was saying before we were so rudely interrupted by enemies, you climb up that ladder and get the old man to follow you up here. Now, don't run ahead, because if you go too far ahead, he'll start complaining. In fact, maybe we should have just put the port crystal here in the first place. What do I know? It's 
about time we pressed on, wouldn't you say, Master? <laughs> Ignore this guy. He's irrelevant. Just have to walk up to the counter. I've never seen a more welcome sight. The spring here has been visited since times of eld for its curative properties. I only hope to be able to ease the ache in my back. Yes, I hope so too. Yes, go have your soak. It would seem I owe you a debt of gratitude. Yep. And an apology. True to your word, you have seen my husband safely to the spring. I was so afeared for his well-being, I couldn't bring myself to sit at home, waiting, wondering. So I followed you at a distance, though now I see I needn't have. Right. My husband and I are met with persecution. That okay, okay, we don't, we don't need the dialogue. We don't need the dialogue. You earned a favour from the magic archer without even short though our acquaintance. And there we go. Magic archer unlocked. And the Maester Scroll. So there you have it. That's how you unlock Magic Archer early. And lest I forget, you might want to put down a port crystal at his house too. Because he does dwarven smithing. He's one of only two smiths in the game that does dwarven smithing, which is the best smithing v option in the game for armor. If you go to enhance equipment, you'll see Dwarven, a style of smithing conducted in a forge lit by lava, blah blah blah. It's not so great for weapons, it does a lot of, it adds knockdown power more than anything. But for armor, it's basically the same as Vermundian, except you have massive amounts of knockdown resistance. So, um, definitely worth having. Two for the price of one. And apparently, Warfare is unlocked near here as well, but I haven't done that yet, so... Anyway, just in case you needed a reminder, here you can see the route. Step one was getting across the river. Step two was getting through Guerco Cavern. Step three, catching the griffin. Step four was jumping off on the bridge. Step five was getting over here and dropping the... Port Crystal, I think. And then you had to come over here do his quest for step six and then his second quest to take him to the hot springs for step seven there you go that's how you unlock magic archer early without even having to set foot in the desert and if you liked this i beg you to please watch my full playthrough it is with this character and i am going to be resetting now so <laughs> all of this video will have been like a magical fever dream so, thanks, and goodbye.